Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick. Your host is for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by the subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a supporter, first of all, thank you very much. If you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other content such as podcasts and our writing by me and our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. So today I am speaking with a friend of mine, a friend of mine named Lisa Hockham. First of all, Lisa, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Hold the opinion until the end, because if we get to the end and you go, God, that was awful, I can I can edit that bit out, okay? So, okay. So, Lisa is a photographer and also the founder of Golden Brand Photography. Um, I know that you also develop the self portrait method, and you also have the Golden Brand podcast. Um, you and I connected through Dreamers and Doers, which is kind of cool. That's the the network. I've brought up a couple of times and um, I actually wanted to talk to you. So first of all, when was it? Was it October? It was October, right? End of October. When we did your photo shoot. That we had the, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was like, around yeah. October. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess the date doesn't make a difference because like nobody's checking up on this, but you know, everybody, everybody out there knows I, I, I have transitioned gender, but before I did, I certainly never liked photographs of myself, <clears throat> but I had this amazing photo shoot with Lisa, which incidentally, quick plug, if you can get Lisa in a photo shoot, go do it. But the, the most amazing thing, honestly, was that I felt beautiful. Like I have no other way to put it. And Lisa, I know I express that to you in words, but I'll tell you again, you know, personally to your face. <sighs> Holy cats. I mean, I walked out of that feeling like I was the most amazing person on the planet. So, you know, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But that surprised me, you know, that I could actually like photographs taken of myself, really just period. But I also wanted to, I mean, I wanted to talk to you in general about that because, I mean, about photography, because I've looked at the self-portrait method, and I certainly want you to, to, um, to give us more details around that. But it, it's interesting how we see pictures of ourselves, and it changes our perception, like, of our identity. And so, let me actually, let me stop there. Can you? Can you, I mean, tell me about you and how you ended up getting the self-portrait method going. Let me stop. Okay. Talk. Well, I, I, you're triggering all these thoughts for me because, um, it's, it's all connected. So first of all, I'm really, really glad that you felt beautiful during the photo shoot, because what I try to do with people is, um, I'm not, I'm not gassing anyone up. So I'm not telling anybody what is not true and what I'm not seeing. So one of my gifts is I see people. I see people clearly. Mm. I see through the masks. I see through the layers and I see who they are and I see their essence. And so for that, that is the reason why people book a photo shoot with me, but it is the reason why people do not book a photo shoot with me as well. Because depending on where you are in life, that is confronting. So I'm not going for the classic, um, I have a different approach to photography that allows those moments to come through where you forget that I am a photographer and some of that is because we're doing this remotely. So I'm not standing in front of you with a big, massive camera pointed at you, which is really intimidating and would never it allow is. you to forget that I'm a photographer, right? Mm -hmm. So just True. to paint the picture for people who don't know what it's like, you're sitting, I don't have my phone to show you, but you're sitting alone and you have a tripod and then you have a remote camera in front of you, which is your, your cell phone. And so you're looking at this device that you look at all day long. And I am this disembodied voice right. coming out of this device. 
And um, I keep up a steady stream of uh, feedback. So I tell you what I'm seeing, but I'm also asking you things and asking you questions about different things to get you to forget what's happening and to get you to have that moment where all of a sudden you're like, that guard is off. My mask is just dropped. And I'm, that's when I come in and you know, when that happened, cause I would get really excited and you'd be like, what did I do? What did I do? But then I told you <laughs> what you did, right? Remember I told you, I'm like, this is, this is what you did. This is what I see. And okay. I think, can I, can I go off on a good tangent for a second? Cause I think we can all relate to this. I think Absolutely. we all, okay. Yes, so please. I think, I hope, I hope everybody has this gift and this is like really great cause it's the holidays and we're all nostalgic. So this is kind of a good metaphor and I love a good metaphor. So we all have that person in our life who is the memory keeper of who we are. So for me, it was my maternal grandmother. And she remembered all the stories of the little things I did when I was small sure. that right yeah. were completely unique to me. So when she died, it was especially yeah. sad because I felt like she took those with her, but that oh, magic yeah. of, yeah. Right. But it's that magic of sitting and hearing what someone else sees and how someone else sees you. It's that magic of being seen through someone else's eyes and then being in the right frame of mind in the right state to receive it and believe it. And then you sort of become it. And so that's the chemistry. And those are like the endorphins and the, that's, that is exactly what's happening during a photo session with me, but I'm not just going for I'm not forcing you into positions to get the shot. So I'm not offering you different masks to try on to get this specific result. And if somebody books a shoot with me and they're like, okay, I've got to have this like boss babe editorialized, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, that's nice. Then we get to know each other. And then I'm like, okay, well, what about this and that? And then what they end up with is like, this is what I wanted, but I didn't. I didn't know how to ask for it. So that was a long way of kind of talking about what was happening during our session, but I'm just making you really feel seen so that you can, you can just let it all down and you can feel safe. And then you, you get to see that in your photos. Yeah, that was a long winded way. Sorry. Long winded was the bad, what bad <laughs> word to you there. You used there. Um, it was, but like that sort of taken me, well, hang on. Cause, cause, cause wait, <laughs> because what, what you just did, I'm going to end up crying here, by the way, because what you just did was say, no, 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 no. You didn't feel beautiful. You are beautiful. I just captured it. Yeah. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Which is but, amazing. But, but, but you amazing. are, um, but you are, but everyone you. is. And I mean, that's our biggest fear is that like, if I, if, if I, I, I'm sending you so much love right now. It's not, it's not a conversation. If I don't make someone really, cry on a podcast, really okay. I, I, <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's a good, it's a good cry. It's not one it's of those bad cry. cries. I don't even have a handkerchief. That was probably a bad idea, but I didn't think you were going to do this to me. So, you know, I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's no, no, why, no. but this is also what repels people. So people who, um, who are really, oh really gosh. comfortable under all the masks and they're really comfortable sure. with this curated version and they're really fearful right. of people seeing the truth. They do not book a photo shoot with me. They do not come into the self-portrait studio. They're not ready. I bet. It's too confronting. Yeah. I understand exactly what you mean. Yeah. Cause it's, I mean, it was hard I walked out of there feeling great because I thought never in my life have I had sort of this sense of validation. But if I have made up my own validation based on untruths, yeah, you don't want somebody to, to, to tell you, well, it wasn't really true. You know, you don't want that. That's, um, 
That's fascinating. I hadn't thought of that. But I wasn't, I wasn't validating. I was affirming what I was seeing. So I'm, I'm just, I just want to make that clarification because I'm not telling okay. you anything that's not true. That's not happening. That's not reflecting. And I'm, I'm trying to be really specific in what you're doing that I, I see as, as you. And so to connect this with the self-portrait studio, um, this was not something I knew how to do for myself. So I can, I can do this for other people till the cows come home. And then I very much saw my, <laughs> I had the masks and I had the fear and I was the person that would be like, sure. don't put me in that confronting photo shoot session. I, I cannot. So when I, um, I did this 30 day challenge for myself, uh, because I saw my failure to be photogenic is what I saw. And, um, so I sat for 30 days in front of my own camera phone and I took photos of myself for 30 days and I, it was hard. It was confronting. I did not like what I saw. Um, I knew what I wanted to come through, but I couldn't force it to happen. And that was, that was the thing. I was forcing. It was very forceful. And I was, I had no self-compassion and I had no kindness. I was brutal with myself. And it was about halfway through when I was like, there's, there's something wrong with this camera. There's something wrong with this, the selfie camera. And there is sure. there's a lot wrong with the selfie camera. Um, but I started using the back camera and then I, I was so curious about why I looked so different, why that triggered me. And so I started to do a bunch of research into psychology and I started to understand where that was coming from. Um, and for me, just to summarize it for people, it's, it's to do with being out of control. It's that realization that I can, I can put up all these masks and barriers and prettify this or present this however I want, people are going to see through it. There's always going to be somebody who's going to see through it. I can't control that. That's out of my control. And I think that's everybody's mm -hmm. biggest fear in photos and having your photo put out into the world is that I can't control what, not even what people are going to think. I can't control what they see. I can't make them see what I want them to see. Sure. Yeah. The biggest problem with a selfie camera is that you're looking at yourself as it's happening, right? Well, so it's reversed. So it's a, it's a mirror that's a good point. Yeah. image of your face. So yeah. when you look at a non-reversed image of your face, it's all messed up. Because <laughs> it's... That's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be this way. And, and right now on this recording, this looks like it's a mirror image, actually, because it looks like what I see in the mirror. Yeah. Um, and so when yes. you add in facial distortion and asymmetry and just all the things that we have going on in our features and you realize you're looking, you're looking at this backwards, it's a it's it messes with your head a lot. Sure. Well. But having the, the back camera taking the photographs, too, you have – you don't know what you're looking at, I guess. I mean, so if you had the, the selfie facing you, you're looking at your face, and you're, you've already said it's not who you – it's not what you see in, in, in an actual mirror, yeah. right? To all the chemists out there, you're looking at it in an mirror, right? There's somebody out there right now going, oh, shoot, would that be a – can you can you superimpose them or with the um there's a chemistry term for that and i forgot it oh yeah i can't think of it can't think of it this is why i was no longer a chemist what's that <laughs> yeah I, say that again. I can't think of it either i said i can't think of it either i can't think of it either but 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 wait the thing I, with the back camera too I, is that <clears throat> wait let me ask you a question when you look in the mirror what's the first thing you do yeah like just do it it, usually, usually, I go. Usually, this is what happens. I go. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. You pull a face. 
You pull the mirror yeah, face. Usually, yeah, we usually all I go, do it. The cheekbones right. go in. Right. You turn to your best angle. Boom, boom, boom. So what are you right. doing in front right. of the selfie camera as well? Right. You're, you're like, oh, you right. pull Same the thing. face. You turn that around sure. and sure. you don't know, you can't see yourself. You're not getting that um, right. validation is the word right. we want to use now. And so you're just blind. You're just blind. And so all of yeah. a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. this is a very vulnerable feeling. And so that is the secondary part of using the back camera. Um, and that's what happens in the self-portrait studio. And there's there's so much more that goes into it. Um, I don't want to give it away because I'm writing a mm-hmm. book and I'm supposed to keep a little lid on a lot of this sure. stuff until the book comes out. But it's just so good. It's so good. Um, but yeah, that's how this rolled into the self-portrait studio because I couldn't figure out how to do what mm-hmm. I did for you in that session for myself to the point where I could be at peace. And I figured that out. And so now that's what I teach in the self-portrait method. And I, you know, I have written down as a question, why do we need something like this? And I think you've answered my question because earlier on you corrected me and you said, no, it's not validation. It's reflection. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not telling you what you see. I'm telling you what I see. And I thought, I think that was how you put it. Hopefully that was because if you didn't, you know, it was really profound the way I just put it. So I hope you did truly say that. But um, the reason why that, stood out to me is to say that what I see is, is not what I perceive is not really, I don't want to use the word reality, but like, I think that's pretty close to what I'm trying to say. I want to see flaws. I want to see somebody I don't like. I want to see whatever else and you reflecting as opposed to validating. Oh yeah. By the way, you are kind of funny looking, you know, that's, A big thing. Well, but, but also too, if, um, okay, no, you just touched on something that's really important. I, when I'm, when I'm talking about someone else and what I see, I don't have any, any stake in what I'm saying to them. So there's going to be, there's going to be honesty and I can see all sides, right? When you look at, so my big question and the reason, one of the reasons why I developed the self-portrait method was because, well, if we can do that for other people, if we can tell other people what we see clearly without all the stories and all the perception junk, why is it so hard to do that for ourselves? Like why, when you look in the mirror, sure. do you hone in, home in on the stories that you want to be telling yourself or that are rote mm. rather than actually go like, no, that's just not true. I see something else. It's, it's terrifying to, to change your stories and to move out of your comfort zone and establish a new baseline. And that question of of who am I, or how do I be myself is, um, I read this in your article and I'm like, yeah, that is a deep question. Just how do, how do I be myself? And and Mm -hmm. yet it is what we are told is the answer to so many of our problems. Just be yourself. You know, I mean, first of all, thank you for reading the article. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I, I think I would disagree with that because I don't think society wants us to be ourselves. Because because when we are, we're it's. You also mentioned uh, um, there was a loss of control. When, when you had the back camera facing to you. apparently my palm is the front of a phone and <laughs> I'm international tracking. sign for it. Turn your phone <laughs> around. Yeah. Um, so wait, waiter, can I have the check please? I'm choking and I need to turn my phone around. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, I think I did that wrong. It's okay. Never took sign it's language. Like, Sorry, it, folks. It's, it's from the chin. Is it, what was it? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Um, oh boy, this, you know, it's this a good is point. something else. <laughs> Do you know? Um, yeah, there's some Italian right now going, geez, my grandmother, you always used to do that. I don't think that's not thank you. I'm pretty confident. Oh, geez. 
<laughs> Keep that in. Do, That's good. Do, do, <laughs> there is no chance in hell I'll edit out an error like that, right? Because when <laughs> right. you can do some, and it's totally unreal, you know, you go, Ta-da. wait, why? What did I say? There was one time I was in a Spanish class, okay? And I said something, I was making a pun on something and ended up saying something extremely like rude and vulgar. And the teacher goes, oh, um, yeah, no, that's not how you say that. And I went, why? What did I? <gasps> oh. <laughs> and then I just went, you know what? Run with it. Because the rest of the class was like, God, did you just say that? And I'm like, yeah. And I probably got a couple of people went, yeah, there were probably at least a couple of people like, damn, I like her much better now. I thought she was a jerk, but that's much funnier than I thought. <laughs> Where, what were we talking about? Control. <laughs> oh, right. Control. Control. Um, I'm glad you're here because <laughs> I think that's a, you know, when, when we, when we do be ourselves, that's, I think, frightening for society because I, I, there is so much of, of social expectations that yeah. exist purely for control's sake. Yes. I want to tell you, you know. You're not blonde, blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, five two, thirty six C, you know. Right. Almost nobody is. So, you know, but but it's a meth. It's a good method of control. Yeah. And I, I mean, actually, I mean, that was partly why I'm so fascinated with with the idea of of using photography because because you can't like you can't lie in a photograph. I mean, you could. I mean, you could take the photograph and mess with it. But if you don't, you look at it and you go, "No, yeah, that was pretty much all I got." So I don't know. There is I, um, there there. I, okay, I think consumerism, what we're sold, our shortcomings. I mean, that all feasts on us not liking ourselves and not being okay as we are. But if right. you if you look at Instagram. If you look at the the social media person telling you how to get a bigger following or PR person telling you like how to get more press, it's like, just be yourself, bring your quirks, bring your thing, be you. That That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like it's sold as this like dangling carrot, but no one tells you how to, how to do that, right? How to do that to where you can be more authentic. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I was kind of talking about it in, in that term. It's just, you're just told, and then it becomes this immense amount of pressure of, well, which version of myself is me and how do I become myself and what does that look like? And it's the, the energy of that is opposite. It's, it's that using the camera, like you said, to see the truth about yourself. But I think the problem, I think one of the bigger problems actually comes down to self objectification. And there are two really smart ladies. They are um, Lexi and Lindsay Kite. And they wrote a book. They're twins? They're twins, yes. And they wrote a book called More Than a Body, which is a lovely book. And it's a nice compliment to what I do. Do you know them? I, I do. You said Lindsay Kite certainly rang a bell. And I went, mm -hmm. why do I know this? Then you said More Than a Body. And now yeah. I remember. And now you remember. Okay, so they they talk about um, uh, on a podcast. Doesn't matter which one, but um, they share this story which illustrates self objectification beautifully. And I think that this is something we have to realize is going on before we can get to the next phase. So they talk about self objectification yeah. for those that are listening and don't know. Is um, it's the idea of walking down a street, right? So you get dressed, you go out, you're walking down the street. And instead of thinking, wow, these leaves are really crunchy under my feet and my warm coat is so soft on my body and it's keeping the chill out nicely. And, oh, look at the colors and look at the sun shining and look at that window display. Like 
that is a non-self-objectification brain in motion, okay? But that's not usually what's happening with most of us. We're walking down the street and all of a sudden is, oh, this coat, it's a little bit ratty. Did that person on the street just look at me and notice that the coat's a little bit ratty? Oh, I just passed that woman who her lipstick is perfect and she's probably noticing I did nothing to my face today. I feel like such a slub. All these people probably think this. So you're not in your body and in your own brain brain, you're actually walking along and seeing yourself through the eyes of everything else. And that is sure. objectification. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so Which is pretty much like our entire lives, right? I mean, anywhere you walk in, you go, oh, did Jimmy look at me? Wait, oh, Judy doesn't like me. And I mean, yeah, every you're seeing, place I go. Like you're that, seeing yeah. your faults and your shortcomings through other people because we are taught that our our power and our value lies in our how we are esteemed by others or viewed by others or how we serve others. And so that is the what we were talking about earlier, that social and that commercialized conditioning mm-hmm. to devalue yourself. And so many of us can live there our entire lives and not realize that there's another alternative option. Sure. So I've, I feel like I heard something conflicting and I must not, it must not be when I felt good about myself. What you said was that you were reflecting me to myself, Affirming. but I took, okay, Be- because w- I was affirming what was coming from you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, I guess it, the, it verbally, I was, I was painting a, a reflective picture of what I was seeing, like almost holding a, a mirror, but it was more, it was more affirming what I was seeing coming from you. Yeah. Which is There's a slight from, different yeah. from reflection, right? Cause reflection okay. is more like mirroring whatever you are putting out and that's, that is whatever you were putting out could be positive, negative. It could be a mask. Okay. Sorry. I, un- I understand the distinction. I guess the thing that, cause you're right. I think much of what I do is go someplace and hope for somebody else's approval. But I feel like what happened when we did our photo shoot was a sense of, of approval that, that you were, you were granting me your approval and, and that's why I felt good about it. But you're telling no. me that's not it. No, I'm telling you it came from you because if you mm. would have, okay, let's, let's paint a different picture. Let's paint a picture of a photo shoot where somebody's not open to the experience and they're very guarded and they came into this photo shoot wanting to very much direct it and get what they wanted out of it and control the situation. And every time I try to take their photo, this is one of the reasons why I have such a lead time up to photo shoots is because in that period of time, I can usually get someone to let their guard down and get comfortable with me. So even if they start out that way during the photo shoot, they're ready. They're ready for what we're going to bring on the day of. Um, that's one reason why I don't walk into a studio cold with somebody I am just meeting. Um, so, I mean, I can, and I can still get the same result. It might just take a little bit longer. So, but if you hadn't been willing to participate on the other side. And if you had come in kind of like with a show me, prove it, or this is not going to work attitude and you weren't working with me, um, it, we could have gotten there eventually, but it would have taken longer. But because I made the process very clear to you, I made all the expectations very clear to you with what you were going to understand and what you needed to know up front and what I would tell you and you would forget, but I would remind you of during the shoot. Um, it's a very participatory process. And a lot of photo shoots feel like they're happening to us. And we give all the control over to the vision of the photographer. And we don't feel like it's participatory. And I very mm-hmm. much require participation. And so 
because you were invited into that space, you're also invited in to participate and to be yourself. It's a very subtle energetic thing that's happening. So I was just affirming what you were opening up and showing me. If you would have remained guarded, then I would have come in at all my little bag of tricks angles to find <laughs> my way in. And I have a lot sure. and I would have found my way in. And when I found it, you would have either liked it or not. It goes goes both ways, but I'm, I'm not there to just snap the photo. I'm there to get you that's what I do yeah yeah so that okay. was you you had to give me something to work with I didn't create that from nothing I created that with the openings and the the fissures and the cracks that you were willing to let your light come out of right that's right that's and that's where I would say wait stop for a minute do you know what just changed and you would go you didn't want to go, yeah, because then you have to admit that you've got it in you, right? Oh. So I, I had to yes. say, this is this is what you're doing. This is what I see. And you could feel the difference. You know, so you had brought up, because, gosh, I have so many things I want to say. Now that I've been writing, I mean, more than a year, you know, now that I have more, more than a year's worth of, of publications, some of the of, of articles published, the articles that have always been received the best are the ones in which, I don't want to say I say something embarrassing, but really that's kind of what it is. When, when I say, yeah, here's something really screwed up about myself, um, those get, people respond to those very well. And um, shoot, there's another person. Was it Austin? Cleon, I think is his name. There's a book called um, Show Your Work, and he has another one. I think that was it, Show Your Work, where he says, people don't necessarily always want to look at genius. People want to look at, you know, the process, but they also want to look at like a person. And right at the very beginning of what I was writing, <clears throat> I tried very hard not to show who I was. Like it was on purpose. I was like, I'm writing an academic journal and you don't you know, you don't, I don't know how many academic journals you've, you've read, but they're not interesting. You're not trying to make them interesting, you know, trying to make them factual. Well, it's been a long time since I've written one, so <clears throat> maybe it's changed. But um, I guess my point is by, by being vulnerable and by showing my I don't humanity. Know if I use the word false humanity. No, it's just your that's humanity. Perfect. It's not because you don't want to say false because that's putting judgment on it. And it is right. And you can barely even say vulnerable anymore because people have taken that to such an extreme just to get. It's like it's like catnip. <laughs> right. I love cats too. So catnip. <laughs> I know. I use that for you intentionally. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I love it. But. I mean, it's the same. So like when I do something on Instagram, I try really hard. I mean, I want to get all the words right. Like if I'm going to record a, uh, you know, some, some reel, I want to get the words right. But I end, you know, I've, I've gotten to a point where I've realized if I try less, hmm. people reply, people respond to it better. The, the more perfect, you know, <laughs> that's not, that's like a little kitty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's you got to hit it on the nose. That's it. You hit it on the nose. That's it's but it, it's weird because it's so it's why weird. are we all running around trying so hard? If it's easy, you just that's essentially what you, you're saying right now is it's easy. And 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 it what you did be. in the yeah. photo shoot with me was easy because all you had to do was sit there and be yourself. And it gets, <laughs> it, yet, yet we complicate it. We make it so hard. We get up in our head. Sure. We compare ourselves yes. to others. It's, of course, all the things, all the things. But, but it turns into, I mean, what I think it is, and I've, the real reason why it's easy, easy, I don't want to say easy, because it, it's simple, I think, is what it is. Because what you have to do is take social expectations and go, all right, well, screw those. That's what you need to do. You know, you end up going, okay, maybe my hair doesn't look great. My, I don't have all the makeup I would put on. My lighting's not quite right, whatever. You know, I look pasty, whatever it is you want to say. But you've thrown out social expectations. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's 
because part of how I believe we perceive ourselves is not really perceiving ourselves. It, it is through, through the lens of, of social environment. And I guess that's why I really wanted to talk to you. Cause I'm like, well, cause this is like a, a literal lens that, that, that you're using. And it's hard to, to, it's hard to mess with that. I mean, again, you can, there's retouching, there's whatever, but the point is, you know, you look at social expectations and they go, well, you know, you should be richer. You should be thinner. You should be younger. You should have fewer wrinkles. You should be, I think I said thinner, but it's that much, it's that important. You should still be thinner. You got thinner, but that's not thin enough. And we never see ourselves. We see a social expectation that is disappointing, consistently disappointing. Yeah. And, and I guess w w what I'm curious if what makes us look at a photograph or read an article and go, yes, is because somebody throws out social expectations and goes, you know, who cares? I'm going to tell you who I am. Mm -hmm. If they're conscious of, I mean, we're, we're having this conversation assuming that somebody has picked apart why they feel the way they feel. They've traced the roots mm. back to social conditioning or familial Already conditioning yeah. or, yeah. right? Okay, so we're making a lot of jumps and assumptions. So for anybody listening to this who's like, I don't know. Am I doing that? I think just it's simply, um, it's, it's the truth. I mean, it's the truth The the camera shows you there is lens distortion. If you're using the selfie camera, there's extra lens distortion. There are things sure. like that. So let's just put that aside for a second, but I do have to acknowledge that, but it's showing you the truth. Um, there is, it may not be the truth you want to see. You might have a different version in your head of, of who you are when you walk through the world, right? Or the yeah. energy that you convey, or um, I don't know. It, it, could, it, could, it, it could even be that it's not a bad photograph. It could just be that you're unguarded and it caught you in that moment with your guard down and that's very uncomfortable for you. Sure. So, but it, it is still the truth of what you look like. And, and, and can I just say what most bad photos are just, we can blame lighting in most of those situations. So that, that can be another podcast later, <laughs> but yeah, I have sure, a whole can... module in the self self portrait method on like that. Once you actually understand finding your light and that doesn't mean the most flattering cheesecloth light. It just means once you understand <laughs> how bad lighting is affecting how you feel about your own photos and you can get rid of that element. Yeah. It, it blows every, that module blows everyone's mind. So let's just throw that out there too. For sure. You had got to have this major like epiphany that has since just exited the building. <laughs> I can't even believe that because you had, you had said it was the truth. And I went, um, by the way, just to prove a point here, I can see that my bangs are going. I messed them up, but like uh, since I'm looking at a mirror image, I cannot. I, I cannot fix them. It's God. it's a reverse <laughs> image. It's it a is. reverse image. The, go ahead. Whatever. I don't, don't want to get you off track. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah, you're right. I already lost my epiphany. Right. No. Um. But you had said it's the truth. What the what the camera shows you is the truth. But it's a truth, um, like the epiphany that I had was, it's, it's the truth, I guess you, you, you didn't, the way I, the way I, in my head, it was like, it was the truth, the truth you didn't know existed. Because you're looking at yourself through a lens of social expectations, not the lens of your own expectations. And when you can change the lens out, that's a bad metaphor, but you know, when you see yourself through your own expectations, that's very different than, uh, and, and accepting. So, I mean, it's the truth in your ability to accept the truth as truth. Yeah. It's, it's just, un you, you, you haven't seen it. And that's part of the problem with, um, a lot of what where our limitations are and the limitations we put on ourselves and what we allow ourselves to actually 
experience and believe right. is right. because uh, we, well, especially in American culture, it's like, show me, prove it, right? Mm-hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. And there's a lot that you can't see that doesn't mean it's not true. And so it is, um, you know, it's like, this is, this is interesting, but it's like the if you're a very insecure person and you have your first love, right? And maybe you never believed anyone could love you or it's, you couldn't believe that person could love you, right? And they say sure. to you, I love you. And you want to feel the euphoria and maybe you do and it's just amazing and you're feeling in the love, but then that fear kicks in and you're like, how do I know that you love me? How right. do I know? How do you know? Right. And it's that pushback and, and the, at some point, you've got to believe that there's more than what you can tangibly hear, see, feel, touch, taste, smell. You've got to have some belief and some faith. And that's where it rubs up against the edges of our comfort zone. And um, it's this internal, it's getting to a place of internal um, comfort with who you are and knowing who you are and a strong sense of self. And I think when part of the discomfort we feel is because we know there's a part of ourselves that is still hidden that we're missing. We can't, we can't see it all slash control it all. But if you're ready to, to heal and to see it, then you're, you're willing to let go of that control portion. So you're willing to take that again, that leap of faith. Oh, this is all coming full circle so beautifully into knowing that there's more, right. And into knowing that your internal resources can be fortified by seeing the truth. All right. So then I want to ask this question then. Why is given all of this, why is authenticity compelling, attractive. What is it about authenticity? Um, I'm not going to say a word. I, well, think, You're looking to be like, you know, and I'm going to know. <laughs> no, I no, I think that, I think that there's a couple things. I think we all want to be seen and known for who we are and the, and for anybody who is ma- doing some heavy masking, even if you are playing into the masking or presenting only a portion of yourself, I think deep down we want to be known and seen and we want to feel safe to do that. But um, we can't, no one can do that or no one can know us or give us that if we're not, if we don't know what that is first, if we don't know what that Mm. is. And I think Mm -hmm. that there is something so attractive. And by the way, I just want to say that, that once you, once I went through the self-portrait method and, and the members say this too, what's on the other side is, is knowing this truth. And yes, it's getting the photos, but also that mental spinning energy that I described of walking down the street with the, uh, the self objectification and just all of the, you know, right. the perceptions and judgment, you know, the truth, you've seen it, you've accepted it. You are reprogramming your brain to get on board with recognizing it. So now there's not sure. this discordant energy in you anymore. So it's like it, everything just calms everything drops into place and it just calms because you're not fighting with that external masking anymore. And you don't feel like you have to wear all those social masks that you were wearing before. And so you can get to the place of that's how you be yourself. That's how you are authentically yourself. And there it's attractive because when we find somebody who is so themselves and so comfortable with it, and it's not because they're attractive they might be but it's that they're so cool with who they are um it's magnetic like it you were just magnetized by that person and i think you can reckon i think if you recognize that in people it's showing you what you are capable of yourself i think that's like a calling for you i was right i was i was wondering if that could be part of it that <clears throat> that seeing somebody else be able to embrace the person they are, that it's it's almost like a bit of permission. I don't I don't want to use the word permission because you kind of have to give yourself permission to do that. But it's expansion. It's, not even kind it's of showing a, you a yeah. possibility. It's like mm-hmm. it's an it's a doorway where there was uh, a wall before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, this is like three quarters of gender identity, right? I mean, the ability to to let yourself be who you are, because if you don't, you know, if all you do is end up reflecting and this is now I now I see your distinction. If you reflect social expectations, it's not the same as being who you are. And it's not even necessarily being what society wants you to be somewhat ironically, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's almost like you're a vessel for something else rather than for your own life and purposes. I mean, I turned fifth. I, well, I didn't turn 51. I'm going to be 51 in January. And, um, I thank you, but I wasted <laughs> so much time trying to be what other people wanted me to be. And then I, and then you sure. and I had this conversation already where I wasted so much time masking for people who, who were masking themselves back to me, who, mm -hmm. who were not mm -hmm. aware of the masks they were wearing. Um, who was it? Somebody right. on Instagram, I can't think of what it was, just had a great post. And it was like, we're so busy wearing all these different masks just so we can get approval from all these other people wearing masks. <laughs> Good. It wasn't, it right. was, uh, Mel Robbins. Of course it was Mel Robbins. Okay. Yeah. It's a whole, right. It's a whole masquerade party and not, um, yeah. And who you are know. you attracted to at the masquerade party? You're attracted to the one person that's going to show up and be like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to wear a mask. Right. You, yeah. You're attracted <laughs> to that one person or something who ends up taking it off at the end of the night. Right. Cause you get half the people go, mm, who are no, you? Cause I was a jerk, but right. <laughs> right. And then you get the one guy who pulls it off and then it, it's the mask of the red death and the whole, <sighs> <sighs> it's a different party. that brought the room down. But, um, but this, you know, honestly, I, 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 I think that this, it's so, I could probably stand to finish a sentence. It so explains like some of the difficulty of gender transition because I mean, you said, you know, you spent 50 years trying to figure it out because yeah, I mean, I spent 52. I mean, I hear you. <laughs> like I get it. And I'm still looking at this now at 53 going, I don't think I have it figured out. Like, I think what I've got is, is, you know, like a semblance of maybe a thought behind a, you know, a, a glimmer and being, being who you are is, is, I mean, I've written about this quite a bit and I'd like to think I wrote some profound things that I never actually truly like internalize them. I mean, I believe them, but you know, it's easy to believe things without actually acting on them. Right. Telling everybody, go do what I said. Don't, you know, don't, don't do what I do. And, um, yeah, it takes time to unravel, especially, you know, I mean, you, you have to be kind to yourself and, and that's one of the reasons why the method we do a eight month yeah. or not an eight month, an eight week photo challenge. Um, cause I've had people say like, well, or I'll have people listen to podcasts like this and <laughs> this is good. They'll send me a DM and they'll say, I took some, I took some selfies and now I love myself. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I'm really happy that you had that experience. You feel like you changed something. That's great. But the reason why we do it for eight weeks is because there's this unraveling of what's taken a lifetime to establish. And oh, you sure. Need, you oh, need sure. time. You need right, time, but right. I have this conversation with my, with my son a lot that, um, you know, it's interesting too, because he came out, um, as, as transgender and it was, I think it was the year after I did my, no. Yeah. I think it was the year after I did my, my challenge and I started asking a lot of these self-acceptance questions of myself. And so I got to see it through his lens and to see what was happening and to see how, um, and I was really actually happy to find out he was taking his own photos. Oh, um, that is cool. I know. And he didn't tell me for a long time, but he finally, you know, he finally shared that with me. Um, and so seeing the experience through his eyes and seeing this is like, it's just such a significant universal thing and how it affects everybody's so differently and deeply. But when I was doing research for the book, there's, um, there's all this evidence that like, uh, selfies are harmful, right? So for, 
cisgender men, women, eh, cisgender men aren't taking selfies. So we're just going to leave them out of the conversation for one quick second. I'm not enough to register on the percentage blip that gets put into studies and research. So sure, it, sure. it is mostly cisgender women, but the other big group um, is actually transgender. It's the transgender group because the, the, but the, but with the women who are taking selfies, it's harmful, damaging, um, changing self-perception, false sense of reality. It's, it's, it's bad. It's all negative. Now really? with the transgender group taking selfies, it was all this affirmation, all this positivity, all this sure. playing with who you are and having right. yourself reflected back all the research. It was crazy. The difference in the effects that it was having on people between yeah. those two groups. Yeah. It's, and, and, and then in the transgender group, there's a lot of stretching and there's a lot of, um, manipulating happening with the images. Not, I'm not talking about Photoshop to like make them look better, but there's almost like this, it's like a sense of taking back of control over this image and making it this thing where it's right. incredibly therapeutic. Photography is incredibly therapeutic for the transgender community. That's why I, yeah. I do the affirming sessions for youth. And and we affirm at any stage. We're not just affirming post transition. We're affirming sure. anything, anytime. Sure. You know, it's interesting. You brought that. I was I was going to bring this up earlier <clears throat> because if I look at photographs from, I mean, a year ago now, less so. But if I go back, like to you know, I think you have an iPhone, so you don't know this. But like Google will can Google continually sends me things that says you know. Um, you, do you remember what happened, you know, five years ago and, and from, I mean, actually there's something in an article where I said this, but, um, you know, at first I was like, Oh God, I don't want to look at that. It's like, Oh shit, really? No, I don't. <laughs> Two years ago. I, yes, I do know what was happening and I'd like to forget it. <laughs> but at some point I started looking through and this was, Oh gosh, it can't be more than six weeks, maybe, you know, maybe a couple months, few months, I'm not really sure. But relatively recently, I started looking back through old pictures of myself. And you're right. I mean, you know, I didn't take selfies. That's ridiculous. But even even images that other people took, like with my phone to be like, here, I'm standing with my son or something, like, take a picture of me, you know. Yeah, that is my smile. You know, right. But I, I look at I look at the the changes and I can see a you know a difference in in um the quality of my skin and and you know differences in fat distribution obviously things like that but the biggest changes are are in my eyes like in my eyes not you know hey look at this one has mascara and this one doesn't it's in my eyes I can look the at light. you know two yeah two years ago there was there was those were dead eyes and and now there's, you know, at least like somebody lit a candle or something. It's like a big lighter or something behind him. But that's the biggest difference. I mean, obviously, my hair is different. My, you know, so much is different. But I can still look back at those and go, oh, I kind of see, I still kind of see, you know, amethysta in those just very, very buried. Mm -hmm. Just not, you know, not actually, not actually out, you know. And I hope you keep them. I, I hope I hope you never delete them. It's so um, this is something else we do too, is we have a benchmark because it's mm. really we we adapt to changes really quickly. So we actually stop seeing the small changes as they're happening and celebrating them because when we see them, we clock them and it goes, it integrates really, really quickly into our our brain. I'm talking about small changes. And so okay. we're discounting them because we want that um, that dopamine hit of the bigger change. Sure. Yes. Right. Agreed. Okay. So, Agreed. so keeping those photos and actually going back and looking at them pretty frequently. Um, and so you can, and then comparing them to what you see now in, in a photo in a non reversed image compare like apples to apples here. Um, <laughs> sure. then you, you've got that benchmark and you can see 
the changes happening. And even if it's something as subtle as the light in your eye that you're now noticing that you have a different presence now, um, that, that, that yes. is that having that benchmark is beautiful. That's why I beg people to stop deleting their photos. I get DMS from people and they're like, Oh, ha ha. I just saw your post. And I had a brand photo shoot. I'm just over here deleting all the photos. And I'm just like, <laughs> I beg you to stop. Like, I just, please just stop. It, it's, it's not funny. <laughs> like I, obviously delete the Sasquatch ones, like delete the ones that are <laughs> mid yawn or something like don't well, torture sure, yourself yeah. with those. But, yeah. but you know, if there's just something you don't like, but you can't put your finger on it, you know, how can, how can you, how can you get to know that part? How can you get to know what that's showing you and, and just yeah. hold on to those photos? So that's a big rule we have is no deleting. Yeah. I was surprised. I'll tell you, I was surprised because I, I originally was looking at these images and going, Ooh, God, never again, please. I don't want to look at those. And, and then more, you know, it was really just more recently. I looked back and went, no, I, I still pretty much see, you know, who I am now, just very, very, you know, deep in there. So, um, wow. It's a breadcrumb. <laughs> See, that's, and that's where the faith comes from. That's where that, that little leap is now, okay, now here's the proof that comes second. Do you know, cause I was going to stop talking, but I do, there was one last little, one last little tidbit I wanted to say, cause you, you've brought up faith that you've got to take this leap. And I agree, you know, there was, um, you know, I mentioned to you earlier, like my voice is still a big sense of, I still have a big sense of dysphoria about my voice. And for what it's worth, like I can tell the tone has changed over the course of this past hour. You know, this is the level to the sensitivity that I've got. But it's the same with, with Instagram stuff now. Um, even though I have like this, this dysphoria about my voice, like I'm putting this podcast out. I mean, there's like, I'm going to do it. I mean, I like every single thing about it, but if I don't do it, then nothing that we said gets out there. If I, even if I have like one, one eye closed, you know, in, in some picture by Niagara Falls, you know, cause you know how half your pictures, you always kind of like this <laughs> about half of mine, Everyone's maybe fewer for you. Yeah. yeah maybe fewer for you. Just, just no, me. I've got those too. Trust me. <laughs> okay. But it's like, look, I want to show that I was at Niagara Falls. I look like hell. Just, you know, look past me. Look past, you know, my sort of Sylvester Stallone looking thing and see I'm at Niagara Falls. Anyway, it's that leap of faith that I think ends up being the distinction between um, maybe maybe that's maybe that's part of the authenticity. That, that, that people yeah. end up going, gosh, are we willing to put that picture up and then go, actually, wow, Niagara Falls looks great this time of year. Wow, how about that? You know, and now you're drawn into the story, you know, part, yep. maybe that's part of it, that, that authenticity lets you say the obvious and go, wow, you look terrible. Anyway, great story, you know, whereas before <laughs> it, it's, it's more of a focus on, Oh my gosh! Wow, the eyes look great. You know, is look no clumps on the mascara. No, you know, whatever. For once, you know, lipstick's not smeared across the face. You know, well done. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't or generally maybe have that lipstick makes smeared them, across. But. Well, maybe that makes them look at their camera roll a little bit differently and wonder why they judged a photo so harshly because they wanted to show a really nice. Moment I think so. Too. No, I think so. so. It, you got to go first and the proof, the proof will right. come, but right. it's just, yeah. Yeah. I know it's a, it's a confronting thing, but there is great, great reward for your, and it, it's for you on the other side. That's yeah. the beautiful thing yes. is like, it's totally for you. Yes. Yes. Well, thank, I mean, thank you for doing this work and thank you for, you know, helping me like understand, like helping me process you know, just the sense of the sense I did never felt so real. That's the better way to put it. I'm saying beautiful, but I really, I had never felt so real. I felt so, so, so seen. I mean, I think that you said it like that before and it's, it's accurate. 
So thank you for that. Thank you for, for all of this work, because who knows, maybe someday, you know, we won't have to have podcasts like this. And people go, yeah, I got an ugly photo. Did you see I look like Sylvester Stallone? But I was in Niagara <laughs> Falls. I was in Niagara and, Falls. I know. You're right. And everybody goes, what did you mean about the Sylvester's? Oh, yeah, right. Anyway, Niagara Falls, you know, hopefully, because yeah. we can get past, you know, a bunch of superficial, you know, claptrap. Won't that be amazing? That's what I Who hope to. Who talks like that? Claptrap? <laughs> I feel like it's it, like it just pulled in something from like the the sixties or something. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I feel like it. Yeah, it just emerged from like the twenties or something, and I should have <laughs> yeah. like a like a cigarette, like a cigarette in a thing, and <laughs> eat this superficial claptrap. <laughs> but how did I know you were going to do that accent before you started? It was <laughs> just all fit. <laughs> well, it uh, yeah, right. <laughs> It has to be sort of, sort of, sort of haughty in French, right? Mm-hmm. Ramon, exactly. close the, close the window. This is superficial <laughs> claptrap coming through the window. Nailed it, nailed it, one hundred percent. I love it. <laughs> I'd buy you as a smoker I, any day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available for photo shoots and uh, anytime you need. <laughs> French French bitch with a window. I, I, I that's my character. <laughs> love it. I love it. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much you know it means to talk to you. Like every time we talk, it's just another you know, it's like another window into my soul that is a little difficult to peer through. But but then I learn and and uh, and I grow, and I think that's the point. Thank yeah. you. Yes, thank you. This was a pleasure. I enjoyed it so much. I always love talking to you. Thank you.